Well, I hope everyone's enjoying their summer. I know I've been uh, so far and I've been doing a lot of camping. And uh, when you're camping, it's really important to have the things that you need quickly at your disposal to make that camping experience more convenient. And not that this is a, a, a a demo about camping, but it reminds me of how I pack up my trailer and the things I need to do at work. I need to have a level of convenience for my users. And so uh, what I want to talk to you today is how I was able to take our Dataverse solution at work, which is Tigraph, and connect it to Microsoft Teams. So let's get into it. And so the, the scenario is, is that we have at Tigraph hundreds, hundreds of customers, and we keep them in um, dedicated uh, customer channels inside of Microsoft Teams. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, you know, finding a channel inside of a team can be uh, very hard to do at scale. And, and we are at scale. And of course, you, some might think that maybe we should just simply have a, a team per customer, but then you have a different uh, issue at hand. And the thing that's very important for us is that those those files, those customer-centric files, and those conversations are just absolutely critical to our customer success story. And so having to repeatedly go back and search for a channel manually to find a message to take action or a file for context, uh, it's very inefficient. And our, our technical problem is that we're using a Dataverse solution and there's no native Teams integration into Dataverse. It exists in Dynamics 365, but it doesn't exist in Dataverse, at least not at this time. And so our solution was to uh, use Power Automate to collect or harvest all of those customer channels across those different teams, create a mechanism where we could link the account record to that Teams channel, and then have a uh, open Teams button uh, on the model-driven command bar that would be dynamic when it was linked and populated. So let's look at the overview of the solution. So multiple customers, teams, inside of teams, uh, we have a, uh, a flow that harvests all the different channels, and we populate that into a, a Dataverse table called channels. Uh, we also have the accounts table that we're leveraging from the, uh, the common data model, and we will use the, the model-driven app, and the users will be able to locate or identify that, that customer channel, which will probably never have the same name as the account record name, create that linkage using a flow, and then they'll be able to click a button, won't have to traverse uh, all those different teams and channels to find the context where they're working. And so we'll use a combination of, of functionality inside of the model-driven app, Power Automate, uh, leverage Teams calls, and also finally, we're using something in PowerFX to make that, that button dynamic. So the, the first thing that we have to do is perform that initial harvest of all of the different teams that exist for our customers. So in this case, we did this like, you know, like a backfill operation, execute it once per uh, customer, customer team, excuse me, we'd have to iterate through those different teams. So that's why we had that var team GUID uh, variable that would get the, the team info. Then we'd run again and get the channel info. Uh, we would compose and parse all of that information so we would have data that we could uh, use for the add new row. And then finally, we would do a, a replace. So when you're when you're doing that list channels action, the result coming back would be the, the link and the link would be HTTPS. If you replace that with MS Teams and then the rest of the URL, it will open up the native app. And that's the experience that we wanted for our users. So we do a little replace on that web URL and that uh, allowed it to open up into the Teams client. So once that was done, harvest across all those different teams and we have the baseline of that information and, and that is added to our custom Dataverse table, then we're able to move on to the next step. The next step is now that daily run where we're going to run multiple times a day and check against the current customer team. We have a debug variable that we'll use to get like debug information. Uh, we create an object for all of the different parameters that we'll need inside of the uh, the flow. We use scopes to try and uh, you know break up the work, handle errors. And so we'll go to the current team for the customers and we'll use that to 
that uh, VAR uh, team grid uh, will do the same thing to get the, the channels. You need to have both team and the channels. Uh, we'll compose this information so we can use it again later for populating that team's channel table. Open that up. And here what we're doing is we're going to list all the rows in that channel, and we're only taking uh, active most recent channel. And so I'm going to filter the results of, uh, of that uh, list channels to just get the last known record. So I can only show the, the last record. And so when I'm inserting, I'm only gonna insert the new rows after that last one is created. And this is where you see I'm doing work with uh, composing and, and manipulating the maximum date. Uh, and then I take that date and I use it to filter that array that it came through of that result set. So I'm saying the create time is greater than or equal to the, the variable date that it pulls back. And then finally, we're able to take that array and grab all of those new channels and plug them into our custom table called Teams Channels. And so now we'll have this table populated, not real time, but pretty darn close. I'll run it like four times a day. We don't add enough customers to do it more than that. So that works out well. And again, I'm doing this replace on the HTTPS to MS Teams because that will click the button. It won't open the browser. It'll open up the Teams client, which is a nice experience for my users. I do a catch inside of this workflow, my production level flows. Uh, I have some data-driven components where I will get uh, the admin of the system, their information, so I can send them debug if there is a, an issue, and I'll take the results from that first uh, scope that we saw in the flow for the try. Uh, and that will be composed and formatted in a way that I can send it to the admin. Should there be a failure, in, inside of Teams as an adaptive card. And it's a very nice experience. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Now we're in the Power Apps doing our model-driven uh, app work, and we're going to un update the uh, command bar. So I go in and I edit the command bar, and I'm going to look at the main form of the account table. So we'll edit that. And here we can see the button that I've created. These, most of them, except for like three of them are the ones that would come standard with the account. So we create a new button and we call it the open teams channel. That's the label. And then we'll tell it to use an icon and we'll use the MS teams icon. I didn't have to upload this. It just existed there already. And on the action, we'll run a formula. So the formula on select is to launch that channel URL that has been linked to the account record. So the first part of the demo, we were harvesting information. There's a linkage that still has to happen, but this is what the button will do. And then we have to show or hide the button depending on whether it's populated or not. And that's what this check is. So if that channel URL value in the account table is not populated, don't show it. Well, why'd you go to the account table? Well, doing a launch, at least, in my experience, doing a launch from the related table and not the account table didn't work, and that's why I had to do that. Okay, next one. This is what the user experience looks like. We're in our model-driven app, and we're looking at a test account. You'll notice that in this configuration tab, we have a customer channel. None is listed, so I'm going to find one that is linked to my test account. We find it, we create the linkage, so now I've done a lookup, and I'll save the record, and I'll come in and I'll execute the flow to link to Microsoft Teams. This should only ever be a one-time uh, activity for my users. You can't do any fancy pattern matching with names because you'll never get users to link the or create uh, the name the same as the account. So at that point, if I refresh the record, go back into my configuration tab, we will see the link, including that MS Teams, we will see that the Teams uh, button is now available, and if I click on it, I get the experience to open up inside of the browser or Teams, but we wanted to go into Teams, and we dynamically come to the channel in question. And you have to keep in mind, we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of channels. Finally, we use notifications to send a, uh, um, a confirmation that uh, uh, that action of the linkage was successful. If there was a failure, they would get a notification there as well, but then a backend notification would go to the administrator of the system. Right, so what does that link to Teams look like? Well, it's executed on demand. 
we uh, we have the debug variable. We have more parameters that we're using to make the flow work. A lot of it is for data driven elements that I've defined. We have the scope and the scope now is going to uh, again list the admin table to understand where to send notifications to. If there's a problem, we're going to get the ID for the account table. Ever so important because I'm going to have to copy uh, a piece of uh, information over. Now I need to check to make sure that the person didn't run the flow without linking it first. And that's what this condition is doing. I'm checking for the length of that value in that column. And if it's not populated, then, then we shouldn't be running it. But in this case it is. So I'm going to go now over to my Teams channel table inside of Dataverse, and I'm going to get the value, make sure it matches, and then I'm going to compose that URL, and then I'm going to set it in my parameters. Hopefully this animation is uh, working smoothly. And so I come into accounts and now I'm setting the, the variable. I'm sorry, using the variable, excuse me, to update the channel URL. And I come down. And I will list the users now. Now, why am I listing the users? Well, if I want to send a notification, I'm going to have to find out who to send it to, and that's what I'm doing here. So I list the users, I get that information, parse it out, and I'm able to get their, uh, I think it's their Azure Active Directory ID or something like that, and then I can send that uh, notification to them. So I've got the owner of the record, the person who's executed the task, and now I can go uh, add a new record to the notifications table, give the account name in the title that we saw in the what the, the functional experience looks like, use the success icon here we go back into our system users and boom that goes out and they get that message right now excuse me so that's like the business side of it the back end is to to do the catch uh, the catch is to catch uh, any types of errors that may have happened so uh, the admin knows to to go in there so the adaptive card again takes all of that debug information that i can trap and sends it to the admin to, to use so that's all good there so really blasted through that. I wish it was that fast to develop versus to talk about it now, but it, it may not seem like a, uh, a massive improvement. It, it's more of a, a marginal gain. And what we did, and I'm a big fan of marginal gains, we've added value to the user experience by removing that manual lookup. Like literally, you, you, have, to, you have to think of all of the different like named customers that might exist in, in your organizations and we would have people searching through different teams trying to find these channels and then sometimes using the wrong information which is uh, incredibly inefficient use of their time and so we were able to remove all of that friction and we give time back to the users uh, the user experience is uh, uh, driven out of that model driven app so uh, they would have their own hub for work inside of the business and it allows them to focus on that higher value business of work. And these margins over time, you know, they, they add up to something uh, significant. So I really blasted through that. And again, I really wish the development time for that would have been equally, but it, uh, it was not. So thank you so much for the opportunity to come here. I'm, I'm happy to keep this conversation going. You can find me on my website or on Twitter, LinkedIn. Always happy to uh, have the conversation continue about uh, all things Microsoft 365 or the Power Platform. Really, really good stuff. Uh, really appreciate it. And, and, and again, just to underscore, don't discount those marginal gains, right? It's the straw that broke the camel's back. So those little things add up in a good way when you're making those little marginal gains and every little minute back throughout the day is a benefit for us. So really yeah. fantastic stuff. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.